Okay, this example um, is, we're going to call it example 2, and it goes along with section 1.5, and this is our uh, example of average rate of change. Oops. Average rate, there we go, of change. Triangle symbol right here is the Greek symbol delta. It stands for change. So rather than me writing out average rate of change all the time, I just write A R delta. That stands for average rate of change. So before we dive into average rate of change, let's review slope. Remember slope from a previous math course? Uh, slope is all sorts of things. Um, we use the letter M as in Y equals mx plus b, where m stands for slope and b stands for y-intercept. You might also know slope as rise over run. You might also know it as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And all those things you um, learned in a previous math course dealing with slope. Well, there's a connection between average rate of change and slope. And if we look over here to this graph on the left of the parabola, uh, you'll notice, first of all, that it is a parabola. It is not a line. Slope is a characteristic of a line. So I can't calculate the slope of a parabola because it's not a line. Uh, but what I can do is pick individual points on the parabola, and we'll get to that in a second, and then calculate the slope from one point to another point. So refresh your memory again on what slope is here, and we'll get rid of that, and put a new page up here, and talk about average rate of change. Okay. So in this um, form that you printed out here, you'll notice there's a little t-chart at the bottom here. Uh, X values and F of X or Y values. And let's just refresh our memory how to calculate those, and I've already calculated um, several for you, and uh, let's go ahead and do f of 2, even though it's right there. Uh, just to refresh your memory how to do that, and then you can calculate the other ones. So the equation f of x equals negative 16 x squared plus 90 x, and we want to calculate f of 2. That means 2 is my input. So 2 is x, and then f of 2, well that would be y, or the output. So everywhere there's an x, we're going to put the 2. And this is a good chance for me to refresh your memory on order of operations. Okay, so we'll do this by hand. 2 squared is 4, and I know to do that first because I'm going to do exponents before I do multiplication. Remember your order of operations there? So 2 squared is 4. And then I can go ahead and do 90 times 2, because there's no exponents to worry about there. So that's 180. Now, before I add them together, I have to multiply the negative 16 times the 4. And when I do that, I get negative 64. Now I'm ready to add them together, and when I do that, I get 116. So that's how I got the 116 here. Um, and if you want to pause the video, you can go ahead and calculate f of 1 and calculate f of 3. Let's do this. Let's that note. Yes, and put a fresh page. Okay, so now average rate of change. So I'm going to move down to the next um, part 2 or page 2 of the document that you put. So you will see here that what I have done is I've drawn a line from x equals 1, that coordinate point, 1, 74, over to the coordinate point 4, 104. So when I do this, this what this is doing is calculating the average rate of change from 1 to 4. See how that's a line and I can calculate the slope of that? So if this particular uh, parabola, if it represents, as an example, a rocket speed, 
um, going up and then coming back down. Um, not a large rocket, but a, a small little handmade rocket, um, like you might make a rocket camp or something like that. Um, you'll know that when it uh, it has uh, the fastest speed when it when it uh, leaves the ground, and as it gets closer and closer to the top, it will have less speed, and then of course it gains speed on its way down. But what I want to do here is calculate the average rate of change or the average speed from one to four. So notice how I've drawn a line from one to four. So I can calculate the average rate of change on the interval from one to four. And that means that the x is one, right here, and that means that the x is four. So the coordinate point when x is one, your y is 74, which we already calculated, and the coordinate point when your x is four, uh, the y value is 104. So the average rate of change, you're going to calculate this just like slope. So that's going to be your y sub 2 minus your y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So let's fill those in. So I have 104 minus 74 all over 4 minus 1. And when you calculate that out, I think the top becomes 30 and the bottom becomes 3. 30 divided by 3 is 10. 